What is going on traders? Welcome back to The Traveling Trader. So today I wanted to discuss oil. What happened yesterday with the oil crash? How did oil actually have a negative price, right? How did it drop to below zero? And how you can actually trade oil, the, the many different ways that you'll be able to trade and speculate on oil. All right, so let us get right into it. As you know, oil crashed yesterday. And for those of you that, that saw the video yesterday, you caught my live reaction as the price was dropping you know, went from $4 to $3 to $2 to a penny to below zero. Wow, wow, wow. Crude oil is one cent a barrel. But what actually happened? How can an asset or a commodity have a negative value? So what actually crashed was the price of the current month's futures oil contract, which actually expires today. And the day before expiry is the last day that oil producers can actually trade oil barrels that will have to physically be delivered in May, right? So uh, for those of you that are new to futures, you think that, that they're just cash settled and that there's actually no delivery of physical goods or physical commodities. But not all futures are cash settled. And in this case, you will actually have to take delivery of a thousand barrels of oil per contract. And since there is such an oversupply of oil currently due to a number of factors that, that I'll go into briefly, since there's such an oversupply of oil, there's literally nowhere to put it. Nobody wanted to take delivery of a thousand barrels of oil. Everybody is at capacity. Everyone who can store oil is at capacity. And the reasons for that oversupply, some of them are obvious. The pandemic, of course, right, causing a stoppage to almost every single industry in the world. So, you know, oil is not being used in the way that it was. There's, there are no planes flying, so planes don't need oil hardly anyone's driving. China, who is the largest importer of oil, was at a standstill. And the dangerous oil price war between Russia and Saudi Arabia, where they were just flooding the market with oil, uh, almost in a game of brinksmanship to see who will break first, that eventually led to the mess we were in. And this is unprecedented. This has never happened before, right? And so everyone's coffers were, were basically full and there's nowhere to store that excess oil. So the price of the current month's oil futures contract started tanking and eventually went negative. And because oil crashed, everyone was naturally scrambling trying to figure out how to make money off of this, right? They saw oil at a penny and they thought that a penny was, you know, the, the, the lowest value that a commodity or an asset can be priced at. Little did we know. Even worse, I saw some traders who were actually buying leveraged oil ETFs thinking that, hey, oil can only go up from here without really understanding how futures contracts work and, and what effect they can have on the commodities price, especially since most of these ETFs are actually based on the futures contracts themselves. Well, that showed that there was a lack of fundamental understanding about oil and commodities in general and how to trade them. Also, there is a very general rule to remember that markets are efficient, meaning if there is a super obvious play, you are most likely not going to turn into Warren Buffett overnight. And moreover, if you could actually buy a barrel of oil for a penny, right? Like if a broker would actually transact that for you or complete the transaction for you, you would actually have to take delivery of a thousand barrels of oil. So we're going to shift gears here and we'll go over to the computer and I'll show you how futures work and what other methods you can use to speculate on the price of oil. How can you make money from trading oil? I'll show you that. Let us get right into it. So in order to talk about futures, I just have to give a really brief definition of what a future is or what futures are. Don't worry, I won't go into it in detail. You can do your own research, but it's exactly what it sounds like. It's just an agreement to buy or sell something at a predetermined price on a specific future date. That's all it is really. And it, it was really a way for you know those who, who held commodities or who dealt with commodities, whether you're a farmer with crops or you're an oil producer, a way for you to be able to lock in prices in the future in case you know you thought maybe that that there might be bad weather coming or there might be you know a shortage of, of some sort of materials. And so it's a, it was a way to lock in a certain price on a certain date, right? But day traders and, and speculators, as savage as they are, obviously started using futures as a way to make money without ever having the intention 
of delivering or or taking delivery of the underlying commodity, right? And and you or I, I mean, you're probably watching this video not because you want barrels of oil in your backyard, but because you want to make money, right? So that's essentially what futures are. If you want to know more about it or the history of it, go ahead and do your own research. But that's what futures are, and you know the 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 markets have really provided a way for speculators to trade these uh, without having to deal with the actual underlying commodity. So here is basically if you're in TradingView or or any other charting or market data platform that, that you're in, the way to find the future, specifically the, the ones that crashed yesterday, the crude oil futures, these are the US based futures, right? US based crude oil futures. And you can see here, if you type in CL, right, this is the, the ticker for the, the crude oil futures, you'll see that there is a bunch, there are a bunch of contracts here. Now these all represent future months, right? So you have May, June, July, August. So what crashed yesterday, if we take a look at it was the actual futures contract that expires today and it was for may this is what crashed yesterday and the reason the only reason you would be in this contract is if you were actually taking delivery of the 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 barrel the physical barrels of oil because this is the current month that actually expired today so that's the only reason that you would be in this and since like i said there is such an excess of oil supply right now nobody wanted to take any sort of delivery of physical oil the price of this contract the value of it started crashing but if we take a look at the future months which in in futures terms is called the they're called the back months right if you take a look at the back months you'll see for instance uh june which is actually now the, the current month since may expire today like i said you'll see that that the june uh contracts crashed today as well down 40 percent and that's why a lot of people lost money thinking that they were going to speculate on oil yesterday saying hey oil can only go up from here no it can't because you know oil etfs are based on on these futures more on that later but if you take a look at the future months let's take a look at june and july you'll see that these are all priced higher, right? You can actually speculate on these contracts. You can buy and sell these futures contracts and settle them in cash before they expire. So you can speculate on whether, for instance, if we take a look at the October contract, on whether $27 is going to be above or below what the actual price of oil will be come October. So how do you trade futures? Well, first of all, you need a brokerage that will allow you to trade futures. In this case, I'm using Think or Swim by TD Ameritrade. And then you will likely need to be approved for futures trading. It's not just something that's automatically there, right? And so here, and it, it'll be similar in any platform you're in, but you basically go to that ticker that I was talking about, CL, crude oil and you'll see here that that it it actually reflects the the price that that we currently saw on on trading view when we were looking at the chart so here you have the crude oil this this is the current contract like i said june 2020 that expires june 2020 so you'll see that that oil is selling for 12 dollars a barrel according to this futures contract so how do you actually speculate on this well if you think that oil is going to go down then you would actually if, if you think that the price of this contract is going to go down then you would actually short uh this contract right by hitting the the sell button and actually funny enough i did this yesterday because i i thought that you know oil would would tank again today and you'll see here i i shorted two contracts of oil and this is a play money account so don't get excited and you'll see that that if this was a real trade i would have made eighteen thousand seven hundred dollars on this and i'll go into to what each price movement represents in terms of a dollar figure but you'll see here that Yesterday, this contract was $21.39. I shorted it thinking the price of oil would go down based on what happened with the previous month's contract. And you'll see here that it's currently at around $12 and that netted me almost 19,000 bucks on this trade. So essentially you would hit sell, right? If you think that it's going to go down or you would hit buy if you think that it's going to go up. And you can do this not just for this month, you could do it for, for all the, the futures months contracts as well now one of these right where it says quantity one one of these represents a thousand barrels of oil and each tick which is the smallest increment that a futures contract can move in this case it's one cent right each tick represents ten dollars so this can get very expensive 
very quickly. And you could see here that it says quantity margin requirement that if I was going to trade one barrel of oil or one uh, one futures contract, a thousand barrels of oil, I would need at least seven thousand and forty dollars. And you could see how quickly you can get liquidated here. If this trade that I set in yesterday, if it went against me and the price of oil shot up to $30, I would likely be liquidated. So this is the first method that I'll discuss on how to speculate on the price of oil. One, you need a lot of capital. Two, you need to be approved for futures trading on your platform. And three, you need to have balls of steel. All right, so besides futures, a much easier way of speculating on oil is through ETFs. ETFs, I talk about them all the time on this channel, exchange traded funds. An ETF is just a fund that holds a basket of assets or commodities. And in this case, we're talking about oil. So, and it trades just like a stock where it has a price that goes up and down and you can buy or sell it on the exchange like you would a stock. And in this case, we're talking about oil ETFs. So I'll go over two of them just to give you a glimpse. There's more than two, but I'll go over two of them to give you a glimpse of the different ETFs that are out there. And then also show you how futures prices can affect this and why people who bought traders who sadly bought ETFs yesterday thinking price can only go up from here were heavily burned today, losing you know 30 to 50% of their money. So USO, United States Oil Fund, it tells you, if you go to ETF.com, this is one of my favorite sites. If you ever want to search for an ETF and see what's in it, ETF.com will tell you all about that ETF itself. It will tell you uh, how, how much uh, in terms of assets under management there is, what the expense ratio is, right? Like how much it will cost you to hold this ETF, etc. But if you take a look at the description, it tells you exactly what's in the ETF. USO holds near month futures contracts on WTI crude oil. This is what we were just talking about. So this right here, right? This is the near month crude oil futures contract. So when you see oil, you know, tanking to a penny and you think, oh, I'm just going to buy an ETF because it's going to go up from here. No, that ETF is based on these contracts. And since, you know, the, the June contract rolled over, this is now the current month's contract. This is down 42% since opening, right? It goes back to the, that trade that, that I did yesterday when I saw, I shorted it at 21 and now it's worth less than $12. This is what this is based on. The fact that that front month futures contract, right? Or current month futures contract in other terms dropped. And so anyone holding USO is now down 32% today. Now UCO is even more precarious because UCO is uh, provides 2x so it's a leveraged etf so whatever happens in the market this doubles your exposure to those price movements whether it's an increase which is in your favor or decrease but again this is based on the index of futures contracts of wti crude what we were just looking at so everything is tied to this futures contract here. And if you take a look at UCO, UCO is down 50% today. So if you bought UCO thinking that, that you were going to become an oil baron overnight, you know, sadly, it's 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 a hard lesson, but know that, that they're based on these futures contracts. It's not based on, you know, oil going from a penny to now, you know, $12. That's not how it works the penny contract or, or the one that, that even went negative, that was last month's contract that already expired. This is this month's contract. You know, just like when the June contract is over, then the active contract will will become the July contract, right? So again, if we take a look at the, at the futures, you'll see here that this will eventually be the current contract. And that, that one's currently $20, you know, 20, 20 and a half dollars. All right, so we talked about futures, we talked about ETFs, and the final way that you can speculate on the price of oil is actually through options. And here are the options for crude oil. And just like the ETFs, these options are also based on the futures contract. So for instance, you take a look at this option here that expires April 20th, you'll see that it says CLM20. And CLM20, if we go back to, to TradingView or whatever charting, uh, software use, if you go to, you're like, hey, what's CLM 20? You'll see here CLM 20 is the June contract, right? Just like if you take a look at the ones that expire in May, that's based on CLN 20. And if you take a look at 
uh, trading view again, you'll see that CLN is actually the July contract. So you can buy uh, you can uh, buy calls or puts or sell calls or puts in the same way that you would any other option. And this is the third way to speculate on the price of oil. Anyway, I hope this was helpful for you. Really, the, the point that I was trying to get across was everything is based on these futures. If you want to trade oil, most of the instruments you use are going to be based on these futures contracts. So if you see oil at a penny again, that is based on, on the current contract that is worth a penny. But the next contract, when that expires, the next contract is not going to likely be worth a penny. And you're not going to make money from the difference of the expiration of the previous contract and the value of the current contract when when it opens all right if you want access to the trading group the trading signals if you need help with your uh, options trading if you want to learn how to trade options if you need help with technical analysis oh wow twenty thousand now too bad this is a simulated trade if you need help with technical analysis and would like one-on-one -on -one coaching with me that link is in the description i take a handful of people every month spots go fast so hit me up if you want to get in for the following month Leave a thumbs up if you got anything out of this video. Leave a comment if you have a question or something to say, or just want to say hi. Leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. Stay safe out there, traders. Please, peace.